Consider this, your data is generated on premises, maybe across a bunch of edge locations, and you want to run analytics or train or fine tune AI models against that data set. Now, if you happen to have the compute power needed for that, great, do it on prem. But if not, you might wish to take advantage of cloud based services to do the job. There are plenty of options. But most cloud services can only work with data that's also in the cloud. In the case of AWS, for example, that would mean the data has to be hosted in their S3 service. But your data isn't in the cloud, it's on prem. So that's a problem, is it not? Well, it was until Nutanix Unified Storage 5 landed. Hey, hey, I'm Steve with Nutanix Technical Marketing, and I'm going to walk through the new replication to cloud feature that was introduced in Objects 5.0, which is part of the overall Unified Storage 5 release. Now, this feature is vital in scenarios where you need to get your object data into the cloud for whatever reason. Could be for analytics or AI ML purposes, as mentioned, or you might want a copy of your data in the cloud as a layer of protection or some other use case. Whatever the reason, this new feature is very easy to set up, manage and monitor. Allow me to demonstrate. Let's start off in the AWS S3 management console. We see we have a few buckets already, but we're going to create a new one. Let's give it a name, Cloud Bucket Destination. We'll keep all the default settings. We create the bucket and there it is. Now let's jump into our local Nutanix object store. This is our on-premises storage. And in our object store management page, we have this endpoints drop-down menu. Upon clicking that, you'll see a cloud bucket endpoints option. We're gonna go ahead and add the S3 bucket we created just now. Give it a description, specify endpoint type and details. And of course, AWS credentials so we can write to the S3 bucket. And the endpoint is added. Now let's create a bucket on the local object store. Give it a sensible name. Find our bucket in the list. And of course, we want to make sure we can write to it. So let's give our user full access permissions. Next, let's set up a replication rule on this bucket. And what's new here is you can now choose cloud bucket as the endpoint type. And there's the S3 bucket we defined earlier. Let's select that and hit next. Now, another useful feature we've added to objects replication is the ability to be selective about which objects get replicated. It may be that you only want to replicate a subset of objects in the bucket based on tag or prefix, or maybe a combination of both. So let's create a rule. And in this example, we'll choose to replicate only objects that contain the prefix new. And you'll notice that you also have control over whether delete operations get replicated or not. You might prefer not to replicate deletes if your goal is data protection, for example, but we'll select it. So we save that rule and replication to the cloud is now in effect. So let's put it to the test. And we'll do that by logging on to Objects Browser, our inbuilt S3 client. There's the bucket we created. Now let's add a few objects to it. Note the file names. There are six files, but only four have the prefix new. So we'll now go back to the AWS console and have a look at the contents of our destination bucket. We see our data has indeed been replicated, but not all of it. Only the objects with the prefix new, so it has duly obeyed our replication rule. Let's do one last thing. Let's go back to Objects Browser and delete a couple of our objects. And remember, our rule stated that delete operations are to be replicated. So if we check the AWS bucket again, we can see the deletions have been mirrored there as well. There you have it. It's really not much different to managing replication between two Nutanix object stores. Simple, straightforward, but powerful, and just the ticket for helping you get your data to the right place at the right time within a hybrid cloud environment. Thanks for watching.